You wanted to see me? Uh, yes, uh, yes, Paul. I really like the way you dance. No, no, I mean it. So I figured we'd try this again. All right, for one thing, if you're going to change your name, why go from a Puerto Rican one to an Italian name? Because I don't look it. People always say, you don't look Puerto Rican. You don't look Puerto Rican, but I am. So you figured you looked Italian? No, I just wanted to become somebody new, so I became Paul well, Why Sanmar would you want to become someone new? I'm not exactly proud of my past. Well, who is? But that's what the word means, Paul. Past. That might be easy for you to say, but for right, me... Look, wait a minute. What made you start dancing? Was it your parents? No. <laughs> what do Puerto Ricans know about theater? <laughs> I mean, now, now they have Channel 47, but... Then they didn't have anything. But my father, he did love movies. He would take us all the time. And he'd work nights and come home and take us to 42nd Street. And we'd go out of one movie and go into another and then another movie. And I don't know why, but I just loved musicals. How old were you? Seven or eight. <laughs> On 42nd Street? Yeah. <laughs> it was a trip. Go on. Well, I would have to move down front because I couldn't see. I wear contact lenses now. But I would move down front and these strange men would come up and sit next to me and, and play with me. I never told anyone because, well, I guess it didn't matter. Why didn't that matter? Why? Um... Look, look, uh, Paul, if this is too rough for you, I have your picture and your resume. So. No, it's fine. I, uh, okay. I guess from seeing all of those movie musicals, I would dance around in the streets and get caught all the time. <laughs> it was really embarrassing. I was always being Sid Charisse, always, which I don't really understand because I always wanted to be an actor. I mean, I really wanted to perform. I remember one time my cousin said to me, you'll never be an actor. And I knew she was only saying that because I was such a sissy. I mean, I was terribly effeminate. I always knew that I was gay, but that didn't bother me. What bothered me was that I didn't know how to be a boy. And. One day, I looked at myself in the mirror and said, you're 14 years old, and you're gay. What are you going to do with your life? <laughs> By that time, I was going to Cardinal Hayes High School with 3,000 other boys. <laughs> I had no protection at all. No homeroom where I could be charming and funny with the tougher guys so that they would fight my battles for me. Like when I went to smaller schools, I really liked school, but after a while, my grades got so bad. Even if I knew the answers to the questions, I wouldn't raise my hand because I was afraid that they would laugh at me. And they would whistle at me in the halls. It was awful. Just awful. And so then I went into the principal's office and said, I'm a homosexual. Well, it was a Catholic high school, and at the age of 15, you just didn't say that. So he said, would you like to see a psychologist? And I did. And he said, I think that you're very well adjusted for your age, and I think that you should quit school. So I did. I didn't really want to, but I just couldn't take it anymore. So after I quit school, what I did was spend my time trying to find out who I was and how to be a man. You know, there are a lot of people in this world who just don't know how to be men. And since then, I found out that I am one. <laughs> I was looking for the wrong thing. I was trying to learn how to be butch. And I spent a lot of time on 72nd Street, meeting all of these really 
strange people. I was just trying to make friends who were like me so that they could help me figure out what it was that I was. And then I met somebody who told me that they were looking for male dancers for the Jewel Box Review, you know, the drag show. And so I went down to audition. And now, from all of those years of pretending that I was Sid Charisse, I had this fabulous extension. <laughs> I mean, I could turn anything at my first audition. And when I finished, the man said, you're too short to be a boy, would you like to be a pony? And I said, what's that? And they said, a girl. Well, what do I have to do? Show us your legs. But I have hair on my legs. That's okay, come on upstairs. And so I went upstairs and they hiked up my dungarees and put on a pair of nylon stockings and high heels. It was freaky. <laughs> It was incredible. And then I went back downstairs and, oh, you have wonderful legs. And I said, really? Terrific. <laughs> it seems so strange thinking about all of this. It was a whole lifetime ago. I was just past 16. Anyway, then there was this whole thing of me trying to hide it from my parents. <laughs> that was something. Because I would have to buy all this stuff like shoes to rehearse in, and earrings, and makeup. And I would hide it all, but my mother would find it. And I would just tell her that there was a girl in the show with me who didn't want her mother to know what she was doing, and so I was just holding the stuff for her. And she believed me. And so then, I was finally in show business. I mean, it was the asshole of show business, but it was a job. Nothing to brag about. I had friends, but after a while it got so demeaning. Nobody at the Jewel Box had any dignity, and most of the people there were ashamed of themselves and considered themselves to be freaks. And I think it was the lack of dignity that eventually got to me, so after a while, I left. And I muddled around for a while. I worked as an office boy and as a waiter, but without an education, you can't get a good job. So when the jewel box called and asked if I would come back, I went. We were at the Apollo Theater on 125th Street, doing four shows a day with a movie. It was really tacky. <laughs> the show was going to go to Chicago, and so my parents wanted to say goodbye. So I told them to meet me at the theater after the show, and they could bring me my luggage and say goodbye. Well, we were doing this oriental number, and I looked like Anna Mae Wong. <laughs> I mean, I had these two great big chrysanthemums on either side of my head, and I was wearing this huge headdress with gold balls hanging all over it. And so we were going on for the finale, heading down the stairs, and who should I see standing by the stage door but my parents. I freaked, I, I didn't know what to do, so I just thought, um, I know, I'll walk, walk quickly past them along with everyone else and they'll never recognize me. So I took a deep breath and started down the stairs. And just as I passed my mother, I heard her say, oh my god. <laughs> well, <laughs> I died, but what could I do? I had to go on for the finale, so I just kept going. <laughs> and. After the show finished, I went back to my dressing room and finished undressing and taking off all my makeup and went back downstairs and, and there they were, standing in the middle of all of these. And 
all, all they said to me was, please write, make sure that you eat, and, and take care of yourself. And just, just as my parents left, my father turned to the producer, and, and he said, take care of my son. That was the first time he ever called me that. Ready for them? <laughs> 